All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about combinations. And combinations is very similar to permutations. So if you haven't watched that video, I highly recommend you start there. I'll provide a link to that in the description of this video. Um, but you, we have um, selection occurring without replacement. So let me go ahead and write this down. It's similar uh, to permutations, uh, permutations um, where um, we have selection without replacement. Okay, and um, what's different here, um, so though, like the difference, uh, is that the order of the selected elements is irrele irrelevant, okay? Um, the order of the selected elements is irrelevant, meaning it does not matter. Um, okay, um, a mnemonic uh, to help remember this, um, something I tell my students a lot of times to remind themselves, okay, so what's, what's a permutation and what's a combination? Um, when we think about position, so position matters for permutations. Okay, so position matters for permutations, and then we have those crazy combinations. Okay, so we have these crazy combinations where um, the order does not matter. Okay, so P with P, C with C. All right, um, notation-wise, uh, when we write combinations, um, we write it as C and then subscript N and then a K, right? So you remember for permutations, it was a P, the subscript N and then a K. Um, also, you will see um, combinations commonly written using this um, binomial coefficient. And it's like, it almost looks like a fraction, except there's no um, bar. And then there's always these parentheses around it. So it's like two numbers that are stacked parentheses around, uh, no bar between those two stacked numbers. Um, and then for combinations, you often see people say n choose k, okay? So these are just different ways of, you know, no notating a combination. Um, the formula um, for combinations, so I will often write the binomial coefficient, right? Uh, the formula is n factorial divided by I know for permutations, it was divided by n minus k factorial. And so that's for permutations. For combinations, the only difference is that now we have this k factorial here also in the denominator. Okay, so we'll use this formula and show a few examples. All right, so we have a box that contains a red, um, or a blue, red, green, and yellow ball, okay? These balls are just scattered throughout this box. Two balls are gonna be selected at the same time from the box. So instead of going and selecting one ball and then not replacing it and selecting another ball, uh, rather we're just gonna go in and get two balls at the exact same time, All right? So if these balls get selected um, at the exact same time, so that's what's slightly different about this problem uh, than the problem that was in the um, permutation video. So find the number of events in the sample space. So in this case, if we got a blue and red ball, that's um, since we're selecting them at the same time, that's exactly the same as getting a, um, a red and blue ball, right? So a red and blue and a blue and red are exactly the same events. These are equivalent to each other. That's what makes this a combination. And then uh, sampling without replacement where you have, you select one and then you select another, that is um, a permutation, right? So you see how this is, order here does not matter. Order does not matter. Right, they are both the same events, red, blue, and blue, red. 
All right, so if I were to try to use a tree diagram, it's actually it's pretty difficult for a combination um, because so my first for first first off there's not two parts right I'm going in and I'm selecting these guys at the same time so I could get a blue red I could get a blue yellow I could get a blue well let me try to do this in order so blue red blue green blue yellow right so red green yellow yep and and then if I start with a red then I could get a red I'm not going to get a red blue because that would be the same as this first one so I would have to go red green red yellow all right and then if I were to start with a green I couldn't get a blue because that's the same event as this I couldn't get a red so the same event as this so I have to get a yellow and then you can see yellow has already been matched with all the other colors so there's no starting with a yellow so there's really no tree diagram that you can really kind of draw for a combination type event but you can of course you can list out all of your elements in your sample space this would be my list of elements for my sample space so i could count them i'd say one two three four five six i have six oops that's not a six i have six events in my sample space right um, but let's go ahead and show, you know, that, that actually took quite a bit of thinking, right? We could just use our formula. And so, you know, when there's only four, um, four, or there's four balls and you're only selecting two, thinking it through wasn't that bad. But, you know, once you get a much larger uh, number of balls in that box, this becomes a much more challenging problem. So, um, you know, there, what's our formula? Once we recognize that this is a combination type problem because you have selection without replacement and the order of these balls doesn't matter, that's a combination type problem. So the formula is uh, n choose k, n factorial over k factorial, n minus k factorial. So n is our total number of balls, k is the number that we are choosing. We are choosing two balls. So 4 over 2, right? So this would be 4 factorial divided by 2 factorial. 4 minus 2 factorial. Of course, 4 minus 2 is 2. Okay, and 4 factorial is 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. 2 factorial is 2 times 1. 2 factorial is also 2 times 1. Right, these guys cancel, and I'm left with 4 times 3 divided by 2 times 1 which is 12 divided by 2, which is 6, right? So I get the same answer, of course. Six events are in S. All right. All right, let's do another example. So we have a quilting guild with 10 members. Every year, three members are randomly selected to be on the board, OK? How many ways can the board members be selected? So in this case, since you have your members, right? So if I have Mary, I have Sally, I have Jean, I have Beth, etc., right? I have 10 members. Um, these members are going to be selected for the board. So there's three of them. So I have Jean, I have Mary, say I have Bob, right, etc. So these members are being selected for the board. It, whether it's Mary Jane Bob or it's Bob Jane Mary, it doesn't matter, right? If you're selected for the board, you're selected for the board. So this isn't particular positions in the board, right? So position here doesn't matter. And you can't have Mary on the board twice, right? So selection is occurring without replacement, right? So once Mary is selected, you're only selecting from the rest of the people. So selection is without replacement. Um, you have those crazy combinations where order uh, does not matter. So once you notice that you're going to use a combination, let's go ahead and write our combination formula. OK, n minus k factorial. And so n here is our total number of members. And k is the number we're choosing. We're choosing 3 to be on the board. OK, so 10 factorial. 3 factorial, 10 minus 3 factorial. So what do we have? We have 10 factorial divided by 3 factorial divided by 7, or times 7 factorial. 10 minus 3 is 7. 
So what is 10 factorial? It is 10 times 9 times 8 times 7. Instead of writing times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 1, let's just write times 7 factorial. And then I have 3 factorial, which is 3 times 2 times 1. And then I'm just going to multiply, and I'm going to leave this 7 factorial. You can see that these guys cancel. So I'm left with 10 times 9 times uh, 8 divided by 3 times 2, which is 6, right? So this is 720, right? 10 times 9 is um, 90 times 8 is 720 divided by 6, which should get you 240. All right, so there's 240 um, events or 240 uh, ways the um, three uh, members can be selected out of 10. All right. Um, and similar to permutation, if you ever do, um, you ever use your formula, uh, and you're using these counting methods, this uh, counting method formula, if you ever end up with a decimal or a fraction, something that's not a whole number is your final answer, then you know you've made a calculation error. Your, your calculation should always come to a whole number here, okay?